This session is one of the most important videos on your learning path because today you're going to learn how to use Git. Git is a must-have skill for any programmer, no matter what programming language you're going to use. So let's get ready and begin. Yesterday, in the programming tools of yesterday, I explained what Git is. So if you haven't followed that video, please go back to the programming tool video of yesterday. So as I explained yesterday, Git is a version control system. It is a software you need to install in your computer and then you connect Git to the project you're working on. And Git will allow you to see and manage different versions of your program so you can see the code as it was at different timestamps. Before we go ahead and download and install Git, maybe it's a good idea that you go to your terminal in PyCharm and type in git there. So not in the Python console, but in the terminal. Type in git, and if you get this error, or some other error, that means git is not installed. So you want to open your browser, type in git on Google, and then go to the git-scm page. And I'm going to show you how to install Git on Linux, Mac, and Windows. On Linux and Mac, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is this. If you are on Mac, run brew install git. Uh, but first, you need to install homebrew in your Mac. So search for homebrew on Google, install homebrew, and then run this command. That should install Git. If you are on Linux, then do sudo apt git install git. So run that command and git should be installed. If you are on Windows, you should go to this page as I just explained to you, git-scm.com and go to this button download for Windows. You have different files depending on your system, but I'll just click this first button. Click here to download the latest git version. Once the file downloads, you can just click it here or go to the folder where it's downloaded and double click it. Press yes. You can read the license if you like, and then press next. That will be the path where Git will be installed. So I'll press next. You can leave the default options as they are and click on next. Next again. I'd suggest to change this option from use Vim to use Notepad++ or use Notepad. I'm selecting use Notepad. So this is a text editor which Git uses by default. Vim is harder to use, so for you as a beginner, I'll suggest to use a simpler text editor such as Notepad. Although we're not going to really use this default editor because we're going to use Git inside PyCharm, inside our own IDE. Therefore, this option is really not important here. So click on Next. The first option is fine. Let Git decide and click on Next. Here, this is important. You really want to select this, the default option, Git from the command line and also from third-party software. So we're going to use Git through PyCharm. Therefore, this is important. Click on Next. Next again. Use the open SSL library. Next. 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 Next again. Git credential manager is fine. Next. Next. And finally, install. And then I'll click on finish. These are some release nodes. I'll close that. And then I'll go to the PyCharm terminal. I'll close the terminal and open it up again. And then I want to try Git. Press enter. If that didn't do anything, then you might want to restart PyCharm. So exit and open it again. Again, go to the terminal, type in git, press enter. And this time we didn't get that error, so we needed to restart PyCharm. So if you got these messages, that means the git command is now recognized by Windows. Right, so now we have git installed in our system, we restarted PyCharm, and the next step is to integrate git with our PyCharm project. 
To do that, you want to go to VCS, this menu here, and then go to the first option, Enable Version Control Integration. So there are different systems there. I mentioned this yesterday, Git Mercurial Subversion. We're using Git, so I'm pressing on selecting Git here. Click OK. And immediately I got these file names colored in red. That means Git is now integrated. So what does this color mean anyway? Well, this color now means that these files are not included in the version control system. So Git is not tracking these files. We need to do something to track them, to add them to the version control registry, also called a repository. So now Git has some folders somewhere where it keeps track of the files you have. So it has a list of files, it sees what files you have here, what folders you have, so it keeps track of them. And you, we need to tell Git now, keep track of these files. To do that, you want to do something called a commit operation. You can execute a commit operation using this green tick mark in here. So press that. Once I press that, that is going to open this window here on the side of PyCharm. And down here you see this ticking cursor. Uh, this is blinking. It's asking us to enter some description. For example, initial commit. Now, this is known as the commit message. Here you want to write something meaningful and short. It is recommended to be the length of a normal sentence. So you want to describe what you did. So what we're doing here is we are creating a timestamp. We did some changes, so we created the initial project and we create a timestamp and then we can go back to this timestamp later on. And as the first message of the first timestamp, we usually write initial commit. And so then you want to press on commit. However, when we press on commit, we get this message, select files to commit. Up here, you'll see this checkbox on version files. If you expand this, you're going to see all the files you have in your project directory. So these are this gitignore file, which we're going to talk about later. This was created by git automatically. And then we have our Python files, functions.py, main.py. There are some files also from PyCharm, automatically created some settings files. And these settings file actually, actually are things that we don't need to include in the version control system. We're only interested to include the files of our project. So what I want to do now is I want to suspend this. Uh, I will not check any of these files. I just want to minimize this and then go to the project directory. And then I want to right click over venv, go to git, and then go to add to git ignore and then press on that add to dot git ignore. Now this is asking us if we want to create a git ignore file. So we want to press on create. And now you see that a .gitignore file was created and it's here in the project directory. You see .gitignore. Now this is saying if you want to add this .gitignore file to git, you want to press on add. So what I did is that I added this then folder to the .gitignore file. That means this folder is not going to be tracked by the version control system. So git will ignore this folder. Similarly, we can ignore that hidden dot idea folder which had all those PyCharm settings files. So you don't want that as well. And if you like, you can also ignore the bonus folder. You just name the folder name there and so on. If you want to ignore a file, for example, todos.txt, you write the name of the file. Of course, we don't want to ignore todos.txt because that is part of our project. Bonus is not part of the project. Those are separate files. I don't want them in my Git repository. So again, you want to go back to that commit window now. You can go either here at this tab or you could go to that button again, commit, and it will take you here. Now you see that .gitignore 
is checked by default and that is because we pressed that add button here when we created dot git ignore pycharm asks if you want to add dot git ignore we press on add that's why this was checked by pycharm to add the other files you can either check them in here one by one or you can click on this always add option here and those will be checked by default i'd like to do things manually so i'll just check everything that i, I know what i'm doing so functions.py yes main.py yes to do's.txt yes and finally we're ready to press that commit button so press on commit here you want to specify a username so just choose something such as or did and put your email address here and then press on set and commit now this password and email address are only asked the first time you'll not get asked again in the future press on set and commit and we are done so i see this message here four files committed initial commit so we committed dot git ignore main.py functions.py and to do's.txt what that means is all these four files now are tracked by git that means if i go to main.py and i add something for example above this it is now print function i want to add another print function print the time is below. Let's suppose that what I've just added is a new feature to the program, right? I added a label. That is a feature, let's say so. Anytime you add features, you want to do a commit. So you want to record that milestone. Therefore, I want to go to that commit button again, the green tick mark, press it. This window will show now in here you'll see that main.py is automatically checked so git automatically found out that we made a change to this file so the next time we commit as we're doing now git notices that we have done a change between the last commit and this commit and you want to leave that checked and you want to write a message at time label feature for example so this is how messages should look like. It's recommended to use present tense for verbs. Try to start your, your sentences with a verb. So add time label feature. That is what you did in this commit and press commit. Right, then you can close this tab by pressing that tab there. And then if you go to this git tab down here, bottom left, press it you're going to see all the commits you have done in your project. So if you press in one commit, for example, I press over add time label feature, here on the right, you're going to see the files you have changed in that commit. So that was main.py. If I double click main.py, it's going to show me side by side the current file here on the right and the previous version of that file here on the left. So you see here, we don't have that print function, but here we have it. So in this view, you can see the differences. But now what if you want to go back to the state of the program as it was in the initial commit? So if I press on in initial commit, you see that main was like that, there was no that feature here which prints out it is time that's a new label so how can you go back to one timestamp to one commit that is what i'm going to show you now so let me close that here is the main.py file as it is right now so you see main.py it's not from the revision it's the actual file and there are two commands which you can use to go back to a previous commit. One is checkout and one is reset. Git checkout and git reset. When would you use git checkout and when would you use git reset? Let me demonstrate you git checkout first. To do a git checkout, you can right click over the commit you want to go to. So you want to retrieve the program as it was in that commit. Right click and then go to checkout revision click that now you're going to see that that print function which was somewhere in here 
has disappeared. So now you're looking at the previous version of the program as it was when you did the initial commit. Here, you'll see this yellow tag with an exclamation mark after it. That tag showed up when I pressed on that checkout option. So that means this is now the current version of the program. The thing is, this add time label feature is still a commit and it is still standing there. So the checkout command is not the actual command you should use if you want to permanently go back to this commit. So checkout is simply to quickly see the state of the program as it was. So you can also execute the program if you like, and you're going to see the output of this current state. Oh, but if you want to have the permanent changes, then you want to use a reset command. So checkout is simply to check a previous version and then go back to the master head. So the head is the latest commit. So now we are currently in here, you see the tag, but then you want to click, right click here, after you have seen that previous state of the program, and then you want to go to checkout and then go to master you see that now the yellow tag went back to the first commit. So now you see that print function is here again. The time is below. Now the reset command is different. If you right click over initial commit and you go to reset current branch to here, then you want to go to hard. And if you press reset now, that commit disappears. So basically you go to the previous state of the program permanently. Therefore, checkout is particularly useful, especially now that you are learning. So each day you can make a commit and you have all these commits recorded for each day. So then maybe you want to go back to a date just to check out the code, you know, see it, run it, and then you can check out the latest branch again. So how often do you do commits in real life? Well, it depends. You'll get used to that with experience. But basically, if you add something and it works, so you, you make some changes, you run the code, it works, then you make a commit. The changes could be changes of the existing code or adding new code. So both could require a commit. Basically, during a day, you might have several commits, depending on how much you code. And that's it. So if I close PyCharm now, I exit. I open it again. And of course, the commits are still there. So in this Git tab, you can access the commit. We have only one commit now because we reset it to this commit. So all other commits are disappeared. The other commits above this commit are disappeared. So that's what you learned today. To wrap it up, you learned the commit command, the checkout command and the reset commands. I know it's very confusing in the beginning. You have many questions, many things you are not clear of. But don't worry about that because you'll fill in those gaps as we program through the course. That's why we have many apps. We're going to build many apps and we're going to use Git along them. So you'll see me how I work in different scenarios. And by the end of the course, you'll have a very solid skill set to use Git independently on your own and understand all its features. One more thing before we close the video. Yesterday you heard me mention GitHub in the programming tool of yesterday. I didn't introduce you to how to use GitHub today because I wanted to focus on Git. So Git is the version control system. That means it tracks the changes on our local computer and GitHub is the hosting platform. It's a cloud-based service where you upload your code to a server to keep it as a backup and as a point to collaborate with others. You, you can share your code using GitHub. Now we didn't cover GitHub today because we want to take things step by step. So today we simply worked locally. Our code changes are tracked locally on our computer. Tomorrow we're going to synchronize the code to GitHub so that you know how to use both Git and GitHub. So with that, thanks a lot for following this and I'll talk to you later. See you.